In this video, I wanted to take a deep dive into titrations of weak bases. We focused mostly on acids so far, and a lot of the ideas from weak acid titrations are going to apply to weak bases as well. We'll just kind of be looking at the opposite type of species being present at various points on the titration curve. So where we saw, for example, a weak base at the equivalence point of a weak acid titration, we'll see a weak acid at the equivalence point when a weak base is titrated and, and other things like this. So I hope you can see resonance and connections from the weak acid video to what we'll talk about here. We won't get into the weeds on calculations too much because a lot of those calculations work very similarly to weak acid calculations. And I think a conceptual understanding of weak base titrations will take you very far if you're comfortable with the calculations on weak acid titrations that we've done to this point. So operationally, a weak base titration looks just like titration of a weak acid, except we have a strong acid now as the titrant and the burette, and our analyte is a solution of a weak base. Classic weak base is ammonia. So we could imagine, for example, ammonia is the analyte. This is a weak base. We need to use a strong reagent as the titrant, so HCl, classic strong acid. And the irreversible titration reaction here is between the weak base and strong acid. We get the conjugate acid of the base and the conjugate base of the acid, which in this case is Cl minus, and it's pretty much entirely a spectator. You can also imagine this reaction is involving hydronium as the acid as opposed to HCl. Now, to run the titration, we measure the pH over time as additional acid is added to the weak base solution, and the curve comes out looking something like this. In general terms, we start at a high pH because we're starting with a pure weak base solution, and as we add acid, we're increasing the concentration of hydronium, and so the pH falls. But it doesn't fall in a very straightforward looking way, it falls in a sort of curvy looking way. Now one thing to note about this is it looks like an upside down version of the weak acid titration curve and that's because many of the same basic concepts apply here. We're just going from high pH to low pH rather than low pH to high pH and in fact if you sort of flipped this curve over by plotting the pOH as a function of the volume of HCl added you'd get a curve that looks almost identical to a weak acid titration curve. We're going to look at this titration curve and the key regions and points on the curve in the remainder of this video. And throughout this discussion, the key equilibrium that we want to keep in mind is the base ionization equilibrium, the weak base analyte, here in H3. This reacts with water to form the conjugate acid and hydroxide to an extent that's dictated by Kb for the weak base, NH3. We'll also have occasion to use Ka of NH4+, particularly when we're thinking about pH calculations where we're interested in the hydronium concentration, although it's also possible to use Kb and think about the hydroxide concentration and then use the relationship between pH and pOH to calculate pH. Okay, let's start digging into the nature of this titration curve and what's going on in the analyte titrant mixture at each point along the curve. And let's start with the simplest situation, which is no titrant added. At the start of the titration, before we've added any HCl, we've just got a solution of NH3 in water. And this is a weak base solution, so if we wanted to find the pH of that, for example, we knew the concentration here, we'd just use ideas we've seen before. Use an ice table, for example, and the given Kb value to calculate the hydroxide concentration, go to the hydronium concentration, so on and so forth. As we start to add HCl, NH3 gets converted partially to NH4+. And in the region where we've got similar concentrations of NH3 and NH4+, we have a buffer, right? And right at the center of that buffer region is a very important point called halfway to equivalence, or V1 half, that we'll return to here in a second. As we pass and get outside of the buffer region, eventually we reach a point where essentially all of the NH3 has been converted to NH4+, that is the equivalence point. And at the equivalence point of titration of a weak base, we've got essentially a solution of the conjugate acid, the weak conjugate acid of the base there. Here it's NH4+, and so in calculating the pH here, we can think of the solution as a weak acid solution. So we should expect that pH to be less than 7 at this point, and uh, we can calculate that pH using an ice table for example, ideas we've seen for weak acid solutions previously. 
Once we get out past that equivalence point, the pH is primarily dictated by the HCl titrant. So, for example, at this point far out to the right, we've got excess hydronium, and the pH of the analyte titrant mixture is approaching the pH of the titrant. We can't quite get there, right, because we're diluting the titrant as we add it into the Erlenmeyer flask, but we can get arbitrarily close as we continue to add more and more and more titrant solution to the mixture. All right. One last important point to talk about here is the halfway to equivalence point. This occurs when half of the NH3 present in the original weak base solution has been converted to NH4+, the conjugate acid. So haven't done a great job here, but this is approximately right here, right on this titration curve. Ideally, it's right at the center of the buffer region is what you'll see in, in practice and in theoretical discussions. In the buffer region, we can use the henderson hasselbalch equation to calculate the pH of the analyte titrant mixture, right? And that says, in terms of the conjugate acid, HB+, the pH is equal to the pKa of the conjugate acid plus the base 10 logarithm of the base concentration divided by the conjugate acid concentration. But at halfway to equivalence, half of the B has been converted to HB+. So these two concentrations and these two numbers of moles are equal. This is, in essence, the definition of halfway to the equivalence point. And so this ratio simply divides out to 1, and the logarithm of 1 is 0. So the pH at that point, at halfway to equivalence, is equal to pKa for the conjugate acid HB+. And if, for example, we were interested in pKb for the base, pKb for NH3, for example, we could use the conjugate seesaw to calculate that, right? And the idea that 14 minus the pKa is going to equal pKb for the conjugate base, assuming we're at 25 degrees Celsius and pKw is equal to 14. So similar conceptual ideas apply when we're titrating a weak base as a weak acid. It's just that the pH is going down rather than going up. We still have a buffer region around halfway to the equivalence point, and at the equivalence point, we have converted the analyte entirely into its conjugate. It's just that when we start with a base, the conjugate is an acid, and we end up with a solution with a pH that is lower than 7, acidic rather than greater than 7.